Hello. Thank you for watching our channel. The term biblical canon refers to the collection of texts or books that a particular Jewish or Christian community recognizes as authoritative scripture. These canons are not merely collections of religious writings. They are foundational frameworks that shape the beliefs, practices, and identities of faith communities. The development of these canons did not occur overnight. For instance, that the first Christian Bible canon was created by Catholic Church in year 382 AD under the leadership of Pope Damasus I and S.T. Jerome of Catholic Church to make the first Christian Bible canon which was known as the Vulgate Bible, which is used by Catholic Church for thousands of years. The canon's main purpose was to centralize Christian teaching and worship behind one flagstaff collection of books and avoid the heretical teachings. A classical example of heresy was Arianism taught by Father Arius of Alexandria. The canon was the result of extensive debates and decisions by religious leaders over centuries, reflecting a complex interplay of theology, politics and history. Notable biblical canons include Hebrew Bible or Tanakh. Hebrew canon contains 24 books, one for each of the scrolls on which these works were written in ancient times. The Hebrew Bible is organized into three main sections. The Torah, or teaching, also called the Pentateuch, or the five books of Moses, the Nevisim, or prophets, and the Ketuvim, or writings. Catholic biblical canon consisting of 46 books in the Old Testament and 27 books in the New Testament for a total of 73 books, Greek and Russian Orthodox Bible, total of 79 books, 52 books Old Testament, 27 books New Testament Ethiopian Orthodox Bible, total of 81 books. 54 books Old Testament, 27 books New Testament, or in the broader canon of Orthodox Tewahedo Bible, includes 88 books which include 54 books of Old Testament and 34 books New Testament. Protestant and Pentecostal Bibles comprise 39 books of the Old Testament and the 27 books of the New Testament for a total of 66 books. In the Christian context, the canon determines what teachings are orthodox and which interpretations align with the divine truth as understood by the church. For Judaism, the Hebrew Bible encapsulates the covenant between God and Israel, serving both as a historical document and a perpetual testament to God's words and deeds. Each canon, therefore, is not just a set of texts, but a living source of authority that guides the moral and spiritual compass of its adherents. The importance of these texts cannot be understated they are used in liturgies, taught in religious education, and serve as the basis for ethical decisions and moral guidance. In many ways, the biblical canon functions as a spiritual constitution, embodying the highest values and aspirations of a community. This is why changes to the canon, or differences between canons of various communities, can lead to significant religious and cultural shifts. The process by which these canons have been formed is as diverse as the texts themselves. It involves historical circumstances that include linguistic changes, geopolitical shifts, and theological developments. Understanding the formation of biblical canons provides insights not only into the nature of religious texts themselves, but also into the dynamic and evolving faith practices that surround them. Not. The diversity in biblical canons across different religious traditions illustrates the rich tapestry of interpretation and emphasis that characterizes the world's religious landscape. For instance, the Protestant Bible includes texts that are not recognized in the Hebrew Bible, while the Roman Catholic and Orthodox churches include several deuterocanonical books that Protestants typically do not. This variation in texts leads to diverse theological emphases and interpretative traditions influencing everything from the structure of religious services to the theological nuances preached from pulpits around the world. In examining the reasons behind these differences, one must consider the historical, cultural and theological contexts in which these canons were developed. The separation of the Christian Old Testament from the Hebrew Bible, for instance, reflects not just a theological divergence, but also a historical split between early Jewish and Christian communities. Similarly, the inclusion of certain books in the Orthodox canon, but not in the Protestant one, speaks to the geographic and cultural isolation of these faith communities during critical periods of church history. Moreover, the way these sacred texts are ordered and read can vary significantly. 
Some traditions prioritize the poetic and prophetic books, while others may emphasize legal texts or historical narratives. This ordering affects how the narratives are understood and the theological points that are underscored in religious teachings and moral conclusions drawn by the followers. The implications of these differences are profound. They affect interfaith relationships, influence theological dialogues, and shape the personal faith experiences of millions of believers. By exploring these diverse canons, not only do we gain insight into the distinct identities of religious communities, but we also open up pathways for dialogue and understanding in an increasingly interconnected world. Understanding this diversity is not just about acknowledging differences, but also about appreciating the depth and richness of our shared spiritual heritage. The Hebrew Bible, known in Judaism as the Tanakh, stands as the foundational text for the Jewish faith. It is a collection of 24 books written in Hebrew, with some Aramaic passages, that chronicle the history, laws, wisdom, and prophetic pronouncements of the Israelites. For Jews, the Tanakh is not merely a historical or literary document, but a living word from God, a divine revelation that continues to shape their religious practice and identity Unlike the Christian Bible, which divides the scriptures into an Old and New Testament, Judaism recognizes only the Tanakh as its sacred canon. This distinction is crucial for understanding the Jewish perspective on biblical interpretation and authority. The Christian concept of a New Testament implies a superseding or fulfillment of the Old, a notion that Judaism does not share. The Tanakh is traditionally divided into three main sections, the Torah, instruction, the Nevi'im, prophets, and the Ketuvim writings. This tripartite structure reflects the different genres and purposes of the books within the Hebrew Bible, each contributing to a comprehensive understanding of God's covenant with Israel. The formation of the Hebrew canon was a gradual process, spanning centuries and involving debates among rabbis and scholars. The process was likely completed around the second century CE, though the exact dating remains a subject of scholarly discussion. Despite the complexities of its formation, the Hebrew Bible represents a remarkable testament to the enduring faith and resilience of the Jewish people. At the heart of the Hebrew Bible, and indeed the entirety of Jewish life, lies the Torah, often referred to as the five books of Moses. These books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, contain the foundational narratives of the Jewish faith, tracing the creation of the world, the covenant between God and Abraham, and the exodus from Egypt under the leadership of Moses. The Torah is more than just a collection of stories, however. It is a detailed legal code, outlining the rituals, ethical obligations, and social responsibilities of the Israelites. From dietary laws to instructions for building the tabernacle, the Torah provides a comprehensive blueprint for living in accordance with God's will. Central to the Torah is the concept of covenant, a binding agreement between God and the people of Israel. Through this covenant, God promises to bless and protect Israel, while the Israelites in turn pledge to follow God's commandments and live as a holy nation. This reciprocal relationship forms the basis of Jewish identity and understanding of their place in the world. The Torah is not merely a historical document, however. It is a living text that continues to guide and inspire Jewish life today. Through study, prayer, and ritual observance, Jews engage with the Torah on a daily basis, seeking to understand its timeless wisdom and apply its teachings to the challenges of the modern world. Following the Torah in the Hebrew Bible is the Nevi'im, a collection of books attributed to prophets who lived in ancient Israel. These prophets served as God's messengers, delivering words of warning, encouragement, and hope to the people. Their messages often challenged the status quo, calling on the Israelites to repent of their sins, uphold justice, and remain faithful to their covenant with God. The Nevi'im is divided into two main sections, the former prophets and the latter prophets. The former prophets, which include Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings, present a historical narrative recounting the events of Israelite history from the conquest of Canaan to the Babylonian exile. These books are not merely chronicles of the past, however. 
They are imbued with theological significance, interpreting historical events through the lens of God's covenant and the consequences of obedience or disobedience. The latter prophets, which include major prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, as well as 12 minor prophets, consist primarily of prophetic oracles, visions and pronouncements. These books offer a glimpse into the minds and hearts of individuals who were deeply attuned to the voice of God, speaking truth to power and calling for social and religious reform. The prophets' messages were often critical, challenging the Israelites to live up to the ideals of their covenant with God. They condemned idolatry, social injustice and religious hypocrisy, reminding the people that true piety involved not just outward rituals, but also inward transformation and a commitment to righteousness. The Protestant Reformation, a tumultuous period of religious upheaval in 16th century Europe, had a profound and lasting impact on the Christian world, including a re-evaluation of the biblical canon. Led by figures like Martin Luther, John Calvin and Huldrych Zwingli, the Reformation challenged the authority of the Roman Catholic Church and advocated for a return to what they perceived as the original teachings of the Bible. One of the key areas of contention concerned the composition of the biblical canon itself. The Catholic Church at the time recognised a larger canon than what had been accepted by Jewish tradition for centuries. This included a collection of books known as the Apocrypha, which were written primarily in Greek between the Old and New Testament periods. While these books were considered by the Catholic Church to be deuterocanonical, meaning they were valuable for instruction, but not on the same level of authority as other books, Protestants rejected their inclusion altogether. The Reformers' stance on the Apocrypha stemmed from their emphasis on the belief that the Bible alone should be the ultimate source of religious authority. They argued that the Apocrypha lacked the same level of divine inspiration as the Hebrew Scriptures and that their inclusion in the canon was a later addition by the Catholic Church. This rejection of the Apocrypha represented a significant departure from Catholic tradition and became a defining characteristic of Protestant Bibles. The Protestant Reformation's impact on the biblical canon extended beyond the rejection of the Apocrypha. It also led to a renewed focus on translating the Bible into vernacular languages, making it accessible to a wider audience. This emphasis on individual study and interpretation of the scriptures further solidified the importance of defining a clear and authoritative canon for Protestant communities. The debates surrounding the canon during this era highlight the crucial role that biblical texts play in shaping religious identity and practice. Martin Luther, a central figure in the Protestant Reformation, played a pivotal role in shaping the Protestant biblical canon. His translation of the Bible into German, completed in 1534, became a landmark achievement, making the scriptures accessible to a wider audience and solidifying the use of vernacular languages in religious life. However, Luther's influence on the canon went beyond translation. He also made significant decisions regarding the organisation and inclusion of specific books. Luther's canon largely mirrored what became known as the Hebrew Bible, excluding the books of the Apocrypha. He argued that these books, while containing some historical and moral value, did not carry the same weight of divine inspiration as the other Old Testament texts. His decision to relegate the Apocrypha to a separate section in his Bible, titled Apocrypha, these books are not held equal to the scriptures, reflected his view that they were useful for reading, but not to be considered on par with other canonical books. Furthermore, Luther reordered the books of the Old Testament, placing the prophets, including the major prophets and the 12 minor prophets at the end of the Old Testament. This differed from the traditional Jewish arrangement, which positioned the prophets as the second section of the Hebrew Bible following the Torah. Luther's rationale for this change remains a subject of scholarly debate, with some suggesting that he wanted to emphasize the chronological order of the texts, while others posit that he sought to highlight the prophetic themes that he saw as foreshadowing the coming of Christ. Luther's decisions regarding the canon were not without controversy. His contemporaries and successors within the Protestant movement engaged in ongoing discussions about the inclusion or exclusion of certain books. Nevertheless, Luther's 1534 canon 
had a lasting impact on the shape of the Protestant Bible, influencing the canon used by many Protestant denominations today. His emphasis on and his careful consideration of the historical and theological context of the biblical texts continue to shape how Protestants approach the scriptures. Section 3. The Anglican Canon, a bridge between traditions. The Anglican Church, which emerged in England during the Reformation, adopted a unique approach to the biblical canon, seeking to navigate a middle ground between the Catholic and Protestant traditions. The Anglican canon, as articulated in the 39 Articles of Religion from 1563, affirmed the authority of the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament, while also acknowledging a distinct role for the Apocrypha. While Anglicanism rejected the Catholic view of the Apocrypha as having equal authority to the other Old Testament books, it did not entirely dismiss their value. The 39 Articles state that the Apocrypha the Church doth read, for example, of life and instruction of manners, but yet doth it not apply them to establish any doctrine. This position reflects a nuanced understanding of the Apocrypha, recognizing their historical and moral significance while maintaining a distinction between these books and the core canon of scripture. This approach to the canon reflects the Anglican Church's broader emphasis on finding a via media, or middle way, between Catholic and Protestant beliefs. The Anglican reformers, while embracing many of the theological tenets of the Reformation, also sought to maintain continuity with the Church's historical roots and traditions. This desire for balance and reconciliation is evident in their approach to the canon, which sought to honour both the authority of the Hebrew scriptures and the historical use of the Apocrypha within the Christian tradition. The Anglican canon, with its inclusion of the Apocrypha, for example, of life and instruction of manners, reflects a more inclusive approach to the biblical texts than some other Protestant denominations. This stance highlights the diversity of views within Protestantism regarding the canon and underscores the ongoing process of interpretation and discernment that characterizes the Christian tradition's engagement with its sacred texts. Section 1. The Latin Catholic Tradition. Embracing a wider scope. The Latin Catholic tradition, with its long and complex history, embraces a biblical canon distinct from its Protestant counterparts. This canon, formally recognised at the Council of Trent in the mid-16th century, encompasses a wider collection of books than the Protestant Bible, including a set of texts known as the Deuterocanonical books. These books, written primarily in Greek between the Old and New Testament periods, had been a subject of debate within the early Church with some questioning their canonical status. However, the Catholic Church affirmed the inclusion of these books, considering them to be inspired by God and possessing spiritual value for the faithful. This decision stemmed from a deep respect for tradition and the Church's understanding of its own authority in interpreting scripture. The Catholic Church, unlike the newer Protestant denominations, had centuries of tradition and scholarship to draw upon, and the deuterocanonical books had long been a part of that heritage. The inclusion of the deuterocanonical books in the Catholic canon reflects a broader understanding of the development of revelation. Catholics believe that God's revelation unfolded gradually throughout history, culminating in Jesus Christ. The deuterocanonical books, though written in the intertestamental period, were seen as contributing to this unfolding revelation, offering valuable insights into Jewish life and thought in the centuries leading up to the birth of Jesus. The Catholic Church's stance on the canon underscores the importance of tradition and the role of the Church in guiding the faithful. The canon, in the Catholic view, is not simply a collection of texts assembled arbitrarily, but rather a living tradition passed down through generations, guided by the Holy Spirit. The inclusion of the deuterocanonical books within this tradition reflects a deep respect for the continuity of faith and a recognition of the richness and complexity of God's revelation. Section 2. Deuterocanonical Books – A Bridge Between Testaments The deuterocanonical books, sometimes referred to as the Apocrypha by Protestants, occupy a unique space within the Catholic biblical canon. These books, which include Tobit, Judith, 
Wisdom of Solomon, Sirach, Baruch, and additions to Esther and Daniel provide a fascinating glimpse into Jewish life, thought, and piety during the intertestamental period, the centuries between the Old and New Testament eras. They offer historical narratives, wisdom literature, and apocalyptic visions that enrich our understanding of the Jewish context from which Christianity emerged. One of the key contributions of the deuterocanonical books is their exploration of themes that bridge the gap between the Old and New Testaments. For example, the Book of Wisdom, attributed to King Solomon, delves into the nature of wisdom, righteousness, and the afterlife, themes that resonate with later Christian teachings. Similarly, the Book of Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus, offers a collection of ethical teachings and practical advice that echoes the wisdom literature of the Old Testament while also anticipating the moral teachings of Jesus. The deuterocanonical books also provide valuable historical context for understanding the New Testament. The books of Maccabees, for instance, recount the Maccabean Revolt, a Jewish uprising against Seleucid rule in the second century BCE. This historical event, which figures prominently in Jewish history, helps to explain the political and religious climate of Judea in the time leading up to the Roman occupation and the birth of Jesus. While Protestants generally do not consider the deuterocanonical books to be part of the inspired canon of scripture, their inclusion in the Catholic Bible enriches the Catholic understanding of salvation history and provides a more nuanced view of the continuity between the Old and New Testaments. These books, though often overlooked, offer valuable insights into the development of Jewish thought and piety during a crucial period in biblical history. In section three, the Greek Orthodox canon, ancient roots and enduring influence, we explore how the Greek Orthodox Church, with its ancient roots in the Eastern Christian world, holds a biblical canon largely aligned with the Catholic tradition recognizing the authority of the deuterocanonical books alongside the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. This canon, shaped by centuries of theological reflection and church tradition, reflects the Orthodox Church's deep respect for the continuity of faith and its understanding of the Bible as a unified witness to God's revelation. The Orthodox Church's approach to the canon emphasizes the organic development of scripture within the life of the church. It is not seen as a static list of books decided upon at a specific moment in time, but rather as a living tradition that emerged gradually through the guidance of the Holy Spirit within the community of faith. The Church Fathers, revered for their wisdom and spiritual insight, played a crucial role in discerning the canon, relying not only on textual analysis, but also on the Church's lived experience of these texts in worship, prayer, and spiritual formation. The Orthodox Church's acceptance of the deuterocanonical books stems not only from their historical use within the early Church, but also from their perceived spiritual value. These books, while not considered to be on the same level of authority as the undisputed books of the Hebrew Bible, were seen as offering valuable moral instruction, historical context, and spiritual insight. Their inclusion in the canon reflects the Orthodox Church's broader understanding of Scripture as a source of spiritual nourishment and guidance for the faithful. The Greek Orthodox canon, with its inclusion of the deuterocanonical books and its emphasis on the Church's role in interpreting Scripture, stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of Eastern Christianity. This canon, shaped by centuries of tradition and spiritual discernment, continues to guide the Orthodox Church's understanding of God's revelation and its place in the world. In section one, Eastern Orthodoxy, a tapestry of traditions, we delve into how Eastern Orthodoxy, a vibrant and ancient branch of Christianity, encompasses a rich tapestry of traditions and practices, united by a shared theological heritage and a deep reverence for the Holy Scriptures. Within Eastern Orthodoxy, Various autocephalous, self-governing churches exist, each with its own hierarchy and administrative structure, while maintaining communion and recognizing each other's validity. These churches, spread across Eastern Europe, the Middle East, and parts of Asia, share a common canonical tradition, largely consistent with the Greek Orthodox acceptance of the deuterocanonical books alongside the Hebrew Bible and New Testament. Despite this shared canonical foundation, 
Eastern Orthodoxy exhibits a degree of flexibility and local variation that reflects the historical and cultural contexts in which these churches developed. While the core tenets of faith remain consistent, each church has developed unique liturgical practices, theological emphases, and even slight variations in the biblical texts used in worship and study. This diversity within unity is a hallmark of Eastern Orthodoxy, allowing for a vibrant expression of faith within a shared framework of belief. The Eastern Orthodox approach to the canon emphasizes the role of the Holy Spirit in guiding the church's understanding of scripture. The canon, in the Orthodox view, is not a static list of books, but rather a living tradition, a dynamic interplay between the written word of God and the lived experience of the church. This understanding allows for a nuanced and contextual approach to biblical interpretation, recognizing that the Holy Spirit continues to illuminate the meaning of scripture for believers throughout history and across cultures. The Eastern Orthodox churches, with their rich liturgical traditions and their emphasis on the spiritual life, offer a unique perspective on the biblical canon. Their approach, rooted in the ancient Christian East, highlights the dynamic relationship between scripture, tradition, and the Holy Spirit, recognizing the Bible as a living source of wisdom and guidance for the faithful. Section two, the Russian Orthodox canon, shaping a national identity. The Russian Orthodox Church, the largest autocephalous church within Eastern Orthodoxy, boasts a rich history intertwined with the cultural and political landscape of Russia. While sharing the core beliefs and canonical tradition of Eastern Orthodoxy, the Russian Orthodox Church has also played a unique role in shaping Russian national identity, influencing everything from art and literature to political ideology throughout history. This influence is evident in the Church's approach to the biblical canon, which reflects both its shared Orthodox heritage and its distinct cultural context. The Russian Orthodox Church, following the Eastern Orthodox tradition, recognizes the deuterocanonical books as part of the Old Testament canon. These books, often excluded from Protestant Bibles, have played a significant role in Russian religious life, influencing liturgical practices, iconography, and popular piety. The inclusion of these books reflects the Church's deep respect for the continuity of Christian tradition, tracing its roots back to the early Church Fathers and the ancient Christian East. The Russian Orthodox Church's use of the biblical canon has also been shaped by the translation of scripture into Church Slavonic, a liturgical language closely related to Old Church Slavonic, the language used to bring Christianity to the Slavic peoples. This translation, completed in the 9th century by Saint Cyril and Methodius, made the Bible accessible to a wider audience and played a crucial role in the Christianization of Russia. The use of Church Slavonic in liturgy and scripture has had a profound impact on Russian religious culture, shaping the language of prayer, hymnody and theological discourse. The Russian Orthodox Church's approach to the biblical canon, while firmly rooted in its Eastern Orthodox heritage, also reflects its unique historical and cultural context. The Church's use of Church Slavonic and its embrace of the deuterocanonical books have shaped a distinctive religious tradition, deeply intertwined with Russian national identity. Section 3. Beyond the Text liturgy and tradition. Examining the diverse canons of Eastern Orthodoxy, including the distinctive tradition of the Russian Orthodox Church, reveals a profound truth about the nature of scripture within these communities. The Bible is not merely a text to be studied in isolation, but a living word, interwoven with the liturgical life, spiritual practices, and cultural expressions of the faithful. This understanding of scripture as a living tradition, passed down through generations, shapes how these churches approach the canon, emphasizing not just the written word, but also its embodiment in the life of the church. The divine liturgy, the central act of worship in Eastern Orthodoxy, exemplifies this approach. Rich in symbolism, chanted prayers, and the use of incense, the liturgy brings the biblical narrative to life drawing worshippers into the mystery of God's saving work through Christ. Scriptural readings, often chanted in the beautiful and evocative melodies of the church, 
permeate the liturgy, weaving the stories, prophecies, and teachings of the Bible into the very fabric of worship. The veneration of icons, another hallmark of Eastern Orthodoxy, further illustrates the interplay between scripture and tradition. Icons, often depicting biblical scenes or figures, are not merely decorative, but serve as windows into heaven, visual representations of spiritual realities. These images, imbued with theological significance, often draw inspiration from specific biblical passages, making the scriptures tangible and present in the lives of believers. Understanding the biblical canons of Eastern Orthodoxy requires moving beyond a narrow focus on the text itself. These churches, with their rich liturgical traditions and their emphasis on the spiritual life, view the Bible as a living word, constantly being interpreted and experienced anew within the community of faith. This dynamic approach to scripture, passed down through generations, highlights the vital connection between the written word of God and the lived experience of believers. Section one, the enduring relevance of diverse canons. As we've journeyed through the diverse landscapes of Jewish and Christian biblical canons, we've encountered a complex tapestry of historical development, theological debate, and cultural influence. From the foundational texts of the Hebrew Bible to the inclusion of the deuterocanonical books in Catholic and Orthodox traditions, each canon reflects a unique understanding of God's revelation and its impact on the lives of believers. The variations we've explored are not mere historical curiosities, they represent living traditions that continue to shape the beliefs, practices, and identities of millions around the world. The enduring relevance of these diverse canons lies in their ability to connect believers to the foundational narratives, ethical teachings, and spiritual insights that have guided their respective faith communities for centuries. For Jews, the Hebrew Bible remains a vital source of identity and religious practice, connecting them to the covenant God made with their ancestors and providing a framework for living a meaningful life. For Christians, the addition of the New Testament, with its focus on the life and teachings of Jesus, adds another layer of complexity, offering a new covenant built upon the foundation of the old. The differences in canons, however, should not be seen as insurmountable barriers to interfaith dialogue and understanding. Rather, they present a unique opportunity to appreciate the richness and complexity of our shared religious heritage. Recognizing the historical and cultural contexts that shaped these different canons allows us to approach our own traditions with greater humility and to engage with those of other faiths with greater empathy. The exploration of diverse biblical canons serves as a powerful reminder that religious belief is not a static or monolithic entity. It is a dynamic and evolving tapestry, woven from threads of history, culture and personal experience. By acknowledging and engaging with this diversity, we open ourselves to a richer and more nuanced understanding of the scriptures and their enduring power to shape our lives and our world. Section two, fostering dialogue and understanding. In an increasingly interconnected world where religious differences can often lead to misunderstanding and conflict, the exploration of diverse biblical canons takes on a renewed urgency. By understanding the reasons behind these variations, we can move beyond simplistic stereotypes and engage in more meaningful dialogue with those from different faith traditions. This understanding fosters empathy, respect, and a recognition of the shared values that unite us as human beings. Interfaith dialogue, grounded in a respectful understanding of each other's sacred texts, can serve as a powerful antidote to the forces of division and intolerance. When we approach these conversations with a willingness to listen and learn, we open ourselves to new perspectives and insights that can enrich our own faith journeys. We discover that despite our differences, we often share common concerns for justice, compassion, and the pursuit of truth. Moreover, understanding the diversity of biblical canons can also lead to a deeper appreciation of our own traditions. By recognizing the historical and cultural factors that have shaped our own understanding of the scriptures, we gain a more nuanced and critical perspective on our own beliefs and practices. We learn to distinguish between the timeless truths of our faith and the cultural interpretations that have evolved over time. 
The study of biblical canons, therefore, is not just an academic exercise. It is an invitation to embark on a journey of faith, discovery and dialogue. It is a journey that calls us to engage with the rich tapestry of human religious experience, to embrace the diversity of beliefs and practices, and to seek common ground in our shared humanity. The following is an Old Testament list of combined books from broader canon Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges Ruth, 1 and 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Kings, 1 and 2 Chronicles, Prayer of Manasseh Ezra, 1 Ezra, Nehemiah, 2 Ezra, 1 Esdras, 3 Ezra, 2 Esdras, 3, 14, 4 Ezra or Apocalypsis of Esdras, 2 Esdras, 1, 2, 15, 16, 5 and 6 Ezra or Apocalypsis of Esdras, Esther, additions to Esther, Tobit, Judith, 1 Maccabees, 2 Maccabees, 3 Maccabees, 4 Maccabees, 5 Maccabees, Jubilees, 1 Enoch, 2 Enoch, 3 Enoch, 1 Ethiopic Maccabees, 1 Maccabean, 2 and 3 Ethiopic Maccabees, 2 and 3 Maccabean, Ethiopic Pseudo Josephus, Zena Ihud, Josephus' Jewish War, 6th Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs, Joseph and Asenath, Book of Job, Psalms 1, 150, Psalm 151, Psalms 152, 155, Psalms of Solomon, Proverbs Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, Book of Wisdom or Wisdom of Solomon, Wisdom of Sirach or Sirach, 151, Prayer of Solomon, Sirach 52, Isaiah, Ascension of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations 1, 5, Ethiopic Lamentations, 6, 7, 1, 11, 63, Baruch, Letter of Jeremiah, Syriac, Apocalypse of Baruch, 2 Baruch 1, 77, Letter of Baruch, 2 Baruch 78, 87, Greek Apocalypse of Baruch, 3 Baruch, 4 Baruch, Ezekiel, Daniel, Additions to Daniel. Chapter 13 and 14, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. The following is a New Testament list of combined books from broader canon Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts of the Apostles, Acts of Paul and Thecla, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 3 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Laodiceans, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, Revelation 1 Clement, 2 Clement, Shepherd of Hermas, Epistle of Barnabas, Didache, Serata Seon, Synodos, Teizaz, Synodos, Geso, Synodos, Abtelis, Synodos, Book of the Covenant 1, Mashafakidan, Book of the Covenant 2, Mashafakidan, Ethiopic, Clement, Kalimentos, Ethiopic, Didascalia, Didascalia, Kebra, Nagast. Disclaimer, this lists are meant for study. As we navigate the complexities of the 21st century, may we do so with a spirit of openness, understanding, and a deep respect for the sacred texts that have shaped our world. Remember to comment, subscribe, like, and share. Be blessed.